Hello, literary art viewers. Uh, welcome to the latest edition of Author Talks. In this edition, we have with us Karen Osborne, who is a highly accomplished author known for her captivating storytelling and powerful narratives. She has written more than four uh, fiction books. And uh, besides writing fiction, she also runs a weekly podcast titled yeah. as What Are You Reading? What Are You uh, Writing? So without further ado, I would like to ask from Karen uh, straightway as to what inspires her, her to write. But first of all, welcome to the uh, show, Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted. And um, I was so happy that you liked my short story as well and and published it. So that was, that was awesome. You know, uh, it inspired my writing. I get it. my newest book, which is coming out in September, True Grace, mm -hmm. was really inspired by my grandmother. And it's a historical fiction. It comes out September 7th. And, and it's not because I didn't have enough facts. Mm -hmm. I had to make a lot of stuff up. So I just say that it's inspired by her. But okay. there's an awful lot of uh, facts in the story. And uh, it takes place in 1924. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's it's in the Congo, in England, in Jamaica, and then in Harlem, New York. But my previous books, mm -hmm. my previous books, okay. they <laughs> mostly the inspiration was these women start talking to me in my head. Okay, these characters, they just you know they start talking, and I think, oh my goodness, I have to go write that down. I have to pull over. I have to you know, pull out my notebook and have to pull out. So they're not really inspired by uh, events as it is inspired by characters who, you know, I'm going for a walk in the evening and they, they start talking. It's it's a very strange thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so who, who are the characters in your books generally? Are, uh, are you uh, trying to raise the voices of Black women or uh, people around you? Uh, uh, your influences are mainly uh, people from your community and how their struggles have been in the past and how they have evolved over the years. Yes, yeah, so I do write multi-cultural uh, books. Mm -hmm. So um, my protagonists are, uh, of the three novels, um, my main protagonists are strong, mm -hmm. flawed, mm -hmm. uh, complex Black women. Mm -hmm. So in one, she's an older woman like myself, and mm -hmm. she's uh, 70. Mm -hmm. And in another, they're young women. Mm -hmm. But there's always also uh, a, another person in, uh, in two of the three books who mm -hmm. is white. So in the Entangled Lives, mm -hmm. the 70-year-old Black woman teams up with a 25-year-old white woman to okay. solve a murder. Mm -hmm. And in Getting It Right to Have Sisters... Mm -hmm. are teamed up uh, and one is mixed race and one is white and one grew up in terrible poverty and the other grew up uh, in, in dysfunctional privilege so I really try to you know I have Latinos in my in my stories I haven't put somebody mm -hmm. from India yet in one but I will <laughs> so I try to I try I to can understand uh, and you mentioned in True Gay Grace uh, your upcoming novel um, you've already mentioned your grandmother's uh, life stories there, but you've also mentioned uh, uh, um, the, uh, the somewhere that uh, it it falls uh, between the eras of the Roaring Twenties and the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, is that correct? Yes, yes. Which but, they came, they came at the same you, time. Before you add anything, I remember one poem uh, by I think. Uh, uh, Langston Hughes, Harlem. Langston. That comes to my mind frequently when I, when when we talk about Harlem. It's a beautiful poem. So I I'm sure it talks about the same challenges how your grandmother sort of uh, went through the years and faced a lot of challenges, evolved and uh, uh, became an inspiration. Yes, Langston Hughes is one of my favorite um, authors. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Langston? <laughs> I have him up here somewhere, but he's one of my my favorite um, authors. And there's quite a few books. Harlem is such a kind of a mystical place in, in people's minds. You know, it, it was 
it has such a reputation mm -hmm. for both good and bad, you know, because mm -hmm. it hit bad times and then it came back. But for my grandmother, um, well, all of this, because the 1920s, Mm -hmm. Harlem was in this renaissance. I mean, there were artists and salons and and um, people starting their own businesses. Mm -hmm. And then there was also corruption. There was a lot of corruption. The police department was very corrupt. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was an immigrant. Mm -hmm. And so she was a woman with no power. Mm -hmm. And and she was an immigrant. She wasn't and she wasn't a citizen. And she had to navigate the legal system she had to nap she had to find a way to support her family and feed them mm -hmm. so while all this opulence is going on around her and things are getting better her life is sinking okay. sinking 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 which made it in some ways more poignant because mm -hmm. she couldn't take advantage of the things that were that were happening around her mm -hmm. and she got and she was victim of the bad things that were happen happening okay. um, in the 20s. Because, you know, there was a lot of, not only was there police corruption, but there was a lot of mobsters and, mm, you know, Tommy Gunn and, yeah. yeah so, yeah. So it was an interesting juxtaposition. True, true. So uh, also, would you also elaborate a bit on, uh, you know, what's been your experience uh, between writing a historical fiction versus uh, others on us yes and there's a big difference mm -hmm. i hate research <laughs> so, <laughs> so do i <laughs> I, I like to make things up and when you write historical fiction you have to do your research you have to make sure that you know what the you know every little detail like i i didn't know that um even though i knew aluminum had been invented by then but I didn't know that shopping carts weren't made out of al aluminum. So when I had one of the minor, minor characters in the story <laughs> lugging down a aluminum shopping cart, I was wrong and I had to fix it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know that I'll ever do historical fiction again because it was so much work, so much research, research. But you say you hate research too. <laughs> but we have to do, there's no other way, <laughs> you know. No other way, you gotta get thing. it right. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the amount of research, though, you know, um, um, it has come down uh, these days, given we have internet and a lot of other resources where we get uh, verified information. But still, uh, you know, you have to weave a story and um, build characters around that story. For that, I think uh, you need to spend uh, time with uh, the information that you have gathered, plus you need to evolve those correct, uh, characters around the information that you have gathered. So I think it's a time spent on uh, something researching as well as building those characters within your mind. So it's a combination yes. of both. <laughs> Putting them all together. It's going to be interesting to see what AI does. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> because, and especially in terms of the research, mm -hmm. uh, because, because I asked um, AI chat mm -hmm. to um, the book I'm working on now. Yeah, chat GPT, I think, is yes. very uh, famous. These it's days. so good. And so I asked him to describe a, a city in Vietnam mm -hmm. in 1969. Mm -hmm. And they came back with great, you know, it was so helpful. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't just lift it, but mm -hmm. it had details that were all together rather than me having to go to 12 different sources so i think there's some opportunity of, of people like me who hate research to be able to cut down on on the amount i have to do absolutely can you share some insights into the struggles you faced during uh you know uh, the marketing process for your books i know start being an author doesn't come uh, without the challenges and when you're writing your first book uh, possibly uh, that teaches you a lot about the process and how do you reach to your prospective readers and the audiences that you have thought in your mind. Yeah. So it's so interesting because my first book came out in 2017 mm -hmm. and I was still working full time. Okay. And, and I, uh, and so I traveled for a living. I was on the road like four, four days a week. And people that I was helping for my business, I, I work with not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. They were so kind 
that was my first book. They would let me, even though I was teaching philanthropy that had nothing to do with fiction, mm -hmm. they let me sell my books. They would let me talk about them. They'd say, oh, sure, Karen, we'll set up a table for you. So the first book, I had all of these uh, in-person visits. When the second book came out, uh, Tangled Lives, in the middle of the pandemic, wow. no in-person visits. And that was the most challenging time for me to, to market my book because you, you were left with, you know, this social media. Mm -hmm. There was almost nothing else that but one could do. That must have to... taught you some new ways to market and reach out to audiences. It did. Mm -hmm. It did. So I had to um, do more things by Zoom. Mm -hmm. I had to reach out to more, uh, to more friends mm -hmm. uh, and ask for help. Mm -hmm. um my publisher was very helpful so i we did you know facebook ads and we did um uh, book bub you know mm -hmm. marketing and so it, it, it took i had to learn a lot i had to learn and figure things out mm -hmm. uh a lot and and now it's just now i have all the tools <laughs> it's just that it's very time consuming mm -hmm. Plus, and that's why I started you will, uh, during the process that that is really helpful when you come out with your next title. Say that again. I mean, plus the network you build during the process uh, while connecting with your audience. I think that helps when you launch your next title. <laughs> that's exactly right. And I foolishly, you won't, this is so embarrassing to admit this to you. <laughs> but for my first book, when I did all of those in person, I never took one name. I had no sign in book. Mm -hmm. I did, I just, thank you, sign <laughs> the book, because I didn't know anything. And so <laughs> here I am with all these people and no way to contact them. So that was one of my most painful lessons for the second book. Someone said, well, you know, do you have your mailing list? Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> so. Absolutely. And that's one of the best things to do. One of the best things to do is to create a mailing list and let it build and build and build. And not one that you bug your readers, but that mm -hmm. when something as good is coming out, something's happening that you're in touch with them. And then my my uh, my podcast, my video podcast mm -hmm. was a way to I help other people. That question also. I yeah, mean, yeah. Talk about your podcast. Uh, what are you reading? What are you writing? So how did that idea explode to you? And uh, how did it evolve? I was looking into it and you had interviewed uh, quite a lot of people there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I do it every week. It's, it's a mm -hmm. weekly show. Mm -hmm. And I did it to help myself and my fellow authors in the middle of the pandemic. Okay. I thought, you know what? What if I started, gave people a vehicle for talking about their book? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so now I'm two years, almost two and a half years old. <laughs> and you know, and and never missed a week. Uh, and I have three months of interviews banked. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, an interview that I do today won't be shown until for three months because I have so many uh, people, uh, you know, in, in the queue. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, it's been wonderful. And I've met, you know, the best part I've met. So I, this must be true for you. I mm -hmm. just met so many interesting people. That's I funny. got exposed to so many different books because I don't just interview people who write the kind mm -hmm. of fiction or write what I write. I, I interview poets and um, I even interviewed a sax, a saxophone player, a jazz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he wrote a, a book on how to teach jazz. Mm -hmm. And he brought his sax and he brought his keyboard and he played. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, so it's just been fun. I just met really, yeah, really that's, cool That's people. really beautiful. And plus... Uh, um, no, it's a very good repository of uh, um, knowledge for people who really want to learn from people who have tried something either in writing or in music or maybe in other creative field. Art. I have I've, I've interviewed a couple of uh, visual artists, mm -hmm. painters. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's it's been a... Where, do you, been where a do you meet them? <laughs> My question. I mean, I really wanted to know. I, I often yeah. end up so, meeting um, of so I used uh, mm -hmm. some of the people who um, my publisher published. Mm -hmm. So he has a Facebook group 
Okay. And we help each other. Okay. So I would say about 50% of the people I've interviewed came from them. Mm -hmm. I have writer friends. I had writer friends. So I reached out to my writer friends mm -hmm. and then publicists started contacting me. Okay. And, and, and they would pitch me. I thought, whoa, I'm being pitched. You know, this was like, <laughs> you know, I've always been the one writing the query letters, but now somebody's writing a query letter to me saying, oh, will you interview my client? So mm -hmm. I've been, so, so that has helped too. People have just reached out to me and said, you know, I watch your show and I wonder if you'd consider me. And my answer is yes. You know, unless you wrote something hard, you know, I mean, I check and make sure that they're not writing something, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I love Nazis, mm. you know, if it's nothing terrible, uh, I, I, my answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's yeah. I think, uh, a good way. Plus, you learn a lot when you talk to uh, a diverse set of people and uh, people who have explored diverse fields, not necessarily the writing alone, but uh, various other forms of uh, uh, creative expression. So I, I think that's a, that's a wonderful uh, uh, thing. My next question, uh, Grace, uh, uh, Karen, sorry. Uh, I, I was just repeating your novel's name. <laughs> so uh, how, how do you, um, uh, I mean, uh, are you writing full-time now or still you are engaged in, you know, in a day job? Because uh, why I'm asking this question is most of the authors, uh, uh, these days, they have to straddle the fence between their day job as well as uh, writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's true for most of my writer friends as well. But mm -hmm. I'm of an age now. Um, I'm 75 years old. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I can do whatever I want, <laughs> whenever I want to do it. <laughs> but I have a very uh, rich volunteer life. Okay. So I volunteer a lot. And I'm on the chair of the board of, a, of, of Easter Seals Florida, which is a not-for-profit here in Florida. And I am an elder in my church. And so I have a lot of uh, volunteer things that I do. And then I have my family. I've got kids mm -hmm. and grandkids and you know that I care about. I have a husband of 54 years who I have to, who, who we still date. Okay. So I balance my time. And then there's the marketing. So it's writing, researching, mm -hmm. marketing, volunteering, mm -hmm. being with friends and family, and then taking care of me. I get to the gym four times a week. <laughs> That's interesting. I think health is far more important because uh, it's only then you can keep pushing for the dreams that you cherish. I, I think it's that's true. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing. Of course, mm -hmm. I read. I read. <laughs> I, I was coming to this question because I wanted to ask what what sort of books you read and what what, what is uh, there on the reading list these days with you? Um, I mean, uh, how do you manage to read uh, books? Yeah. So I listen to a lot of books. Mm -hmm. I like audio uh, books because, I mean, clearly I like hardcover books too, but mm -hmm. uh, the audio books I can do when I'm on a walk, I can do it on the treadmill. I can mm -hmm. listen. So I, I, I read a lot of and listen to a lot of thrillers and I like to write suspense books mm -hmm. and I enjoy reading suspense books. So, you know, McCon uh, um, Michael Connelly and, and David Baldacci and, and I love um, Nora Roberts. I think she's, she's just an incredible, especially now she's, she writes, romance fantasy and she writes just such an interesting group of books i like mm -hmm. to support um people of color mm -hmm. and read those books that uh that that they have written you know so that i'm i'm grounded mm -hmm. in in good um you know writers of i was just talking to a, a friend about how does she uh find diverse writers mm -hmm. so that we can you know read diverse uh, diverse books and then I read a lot of the people I interview I read their books mm -hmm. you know so uh, Gail because, yeah, reading variety of books I think that sort of uh, uh, not only expands uh, your uh, uh, you know thought process 
and it helps you when you are writing your next title. <laughs> it does. It gives you so much, you know. And then, of course, I love William Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And and I love um, Toni Morrison and James Baldwin mm -hmm. and August Wilson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very eclectic. Yeah, absolutely. So what sort of advice would you give to young writers, people who are starting to write for the first time, possibly, you know, aiming at launching their book? Um, just uh, an advice from, uh, from a writer. And then I think uh, a marketing advice, the mistakes that you have done, you don't want them to repeat, sort of. <laughs> yes. So my advice is, writers write mm -hmm. you can't call yourself a writer you can't think about you know you need to write mm -hmm. and i think there's a very small percentage of people that actually finish a book mm -hmm. i think it's i heard it was like six percent or something people who start a book and and finish it so be part of that six percent you know <laughs> write 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 my son who's also an, a published um author he's a short story um author and he uh, and a number of uh, literary magazines and he writes 15 minutes a day. He has a promise to himself, even though he has a full-time job and a family and, you know, he's 15 minutes a day. He makes sure writers write. The second thing I would say that's so important is that you keep building on your craft. Like you got to learn something new every day. You got to keep learning. It doesn't matter how many books you have out. It doesn't matter if you don't have any out. You have to work on your, on your craft. And those are probably the two most important things. Mm -hmm. it, and then, of course, read. Read, 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 read. Because that's where you learn so much from the greats to the not so greats. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that spectrum. Because you learn things not to do. Like, I, mm, look what she did. I, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want to um, write, read, and work on your craft. Right. Also, the marketing advice, mistakes that you possibly did and you don't want others to repeat. I know you have already mentioned uh, answered the big one. <laughs> <laughs> Start a mailing list. Get those names. <laughs> don't just say hi, hello, and then you don't capture the information you need. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other thing is you have to set a budget. Okay. Because it can really, a budget of time and a budget of money. Okay. There are so many people who reach out to you. Oh, I can help you do this. You know, for only $75, I'll get you this. You, you have to just, you have to really make up your mind. This is how much money I'm going to spend on marketing. This mm -hmm. is how much time I'm going to spend on marketing and then stop mm -hmm. because it can just consume you and it can consume all your dollars that you will never make up in book sales ever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, um, it's it's not gonna it just doesn't work that way. So you have to you have to really have that discipline. Mm -hmm. And then I think asking other writers, what did you do that worked really well? Mm -hmm. And what did you do that didn't work really well? So my last book launch I did um on Zoom mm -hmm. and and it was a lot of fun. I had a blast, but I didn't advertise it enough. I didn't do enough to entice people. I didn't you know, so, you know, I don't know. I think most, people. most authors uh, lack this ability. They somehow, they start very good and they are pretty excited when they launch it. But after a few days, they get involved in into another writing project. And I think the zeal, the enthusiasm that was around the uh, recent title, that, 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 that uh, you know, fades away. <laughs> it does, right? Are you an author? I have... Uh, uh, I, I have one title in my name. I have uh, uh, written a poetry collection, uh, Songs of Suicide. And I also released that title during the pandemic, start of the pandemic. I face similar challenges as you uh, while, you know, reaching out to the uh, prospective readers. But somehow lately I learned that uh, how to, you know, write to people I know and uh, I wrote to them. Yes. And that's how my book got sold in different markets. So. It oh, was very good. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And yeah. poetry is not easy. You know, it's not an easy one to to sell. Um, my murder mystery is the book that did the best. 
You know, it's, I only have one murder mystery and that has been far because people like murder mysteries, mm. you know, and, uh, and series, people like series, but I don't like writing series. Mm. You know, each of my books is different. So it's, um, it's a combination, isn't it, of writing what you love mm. and then reaching out, reaching out and hoping it connects with people, you That's know, with people out there. Yeah. Yeah. And not... recently, and speaking at different forums, wherever your, your your publisher invites you, I think that's pretty important participation in different events, activities in LitFest. So um, I, I recently attended a lot of them, uh, three or four uh, on the request of my publisher, a uh, very supportive publisher, to be very honest. So okay. after after those opportunities, I, I got myself connected to the audience have their feedback and got a lot of my books sold. So that was mm -hmm. also an experience of a sort. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. And, and there are different publishers. Some publishers don't help you at all. That's true. You know, especially in today's market, unless you're a big, big name, true. you know, you, you can get less and less. So finding a publisher that is, is supportive. Mm -hmm. um, Black Rose Writing is the name of my, pub my publisher and mm -hmm. they're in Texas and, He's so supportive and he's so supportive and he helps us support each other. And mm. that makes a huge, makes a huge difference. Okay. Yeah. So we're both fortunate. And that's very important to your publisher supports you. Even if it doesn't, you need to create your space. You know, your book is out there and uh, it's your responsibility. You can't just uh, uh, finish a book, get it published and then uh, over. Actually, your work begins when you, publish your book, you need to uh, start connecting with your right kind of people uh, who you yeah. mean that these this book should be read uh, by. So I think- And that's... actually, you have to do that even before it comes out. Mm -hmm. So in anticipation of True Grace coming out in September, mm -hmm. I have 10 people reading the finished manuscript and writing reviews, mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, so that I can, I'll have blurbs on the book. I'll have, you know, that it'll come out with some recognition already. Right. And uh, and then my my publisher um, puts us into contests, mm -hmm. different contests. So books get, you know, like um, Tangled Wise got a couple of awards. It was a finalist in one for best okay. thriller. And and uh, and then um, Reckonings just uh, has a, uh, award that's coming out so Congratulations. You, know, you have to, so many different things that you have to do mm -hmm. to just try and elevate elevate your book right yeah that's very important so karen thank you so much for your time and uh my sincere apologies once again for the goof up in the beginning but anyway we happen to speak and uh, that's pretty important I'm sure uh, literary readers will love this conversation and we'll stay connected for further conversations as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And please, everybody, I hope you get a chance to read Recoil, which which was um, which is in uh, the magazine online. OK, I'm sure I'm sure I'll, I'll just uh, give these links in the description of the video both uh, to your uh, uh, weekly podcast as well as the uh, the upcoming book thank you thank you so thank much you.